Hello, this is Eric with Bain Group, and today we're going to learn all about Microsoft 365 Groups. This is a part one of a two-part series, so stay tuned for part two. Here are the topics we're going to cover today. What is a Microsoft 365 Group? And we're going to show you how to create a Microsoft 365 Group. Okay, so let's start with the first topic of today. What is a Microsoft 365 group? Groups in Microsoft 365 allow for the creation of collaborative spaces to be easily set up, and they also provide a straightforward permissions management system. Groups creates a space with shared tools. Uh, these tools include a shared Outlook inbox, a shared calendar, and a document library to collaborate on files. Okay, now that we know what Microsoft 365 Groups are, let's find out how to create one. So because there are different versions of the Outlook desktop app, for this video, I'll be using Outlook on the web, using my web browser. If you don't know how to access Outlook on the web, all you have to do is log into your Office 365 account and use the waffle menu located, located on the top left corner of the screen. So let's click here, waffle menu. And we click on the Outlook link here. Okay, so to create our Microsoft 365 group, all we have to do is click the People pane, and that is located at the bottom of our left navigation panel right down here. And now to create one, we go up on the upper part of our left navigation panel. I'm going to click this pull down. We'll see the feature of new group. Okay. So here's where we name our group. Uh, for purposes of this example, I'm going to create a group for our social media team. So I'm going to give this a relatable name. I'm going to call this social media. Now, as you can see, as I'm typing right below here, it is starting to generate our email address that will be associated to this group. Uh, I don't necessarily have to stick with social media. I can call it somewhere else, something else. Um, but I do like it that it's just called social media. It will also check if that email address is available. If it's not, you'll see a red alert highlighting this whole field. And that's letting you know that the email address you're proposing is already taken. So you will have to edit yours a little bit. You can alter it just by adding a digit, maybe, maybe like a two or, you know, putting an underscore somewhere that way. If you still want to stick with your warning, um, you can just alter it in a different way so that both email addresses are not identical. Okay, we have a description field. This is going to help um, any, new, any new members uh, give them just a little bit more of a description of what your group is trying to do, what your group in, entails. Um, so I'm going to give it a quick description here. Okay, so I think that's a good enough description for um, members in my company to know and new members coming into the group. So now here we have an edit button where we can begin editing some of the settings in it with our group. Um, the first one is privacy, which I believe is the most important one. So there's two options. You can go either the private route or public. Private means that your group will remain private. That means only members that you invite or get get an invitation will be allowed to see what's inside of this group. Public means that anyone in your organization can join in this group and see what's posted here. Um, by default, the system does choose private, and I think that is a... Smart choice. 
The only time I would see public being a good option is for something that are company-wide events, maybe, or staff staff-wide events, maybe like birthdays, um, or just a group where we give company-wide news. But for the most part, the people working in teams are working on something in common. And we don't need everybody in the company to be able to jump in here. Um, because the concern is that if everyone's able to join in, everyone is able to edit documents in here. Everyone can delete stuff. And we don't want accidents to happen. So um, by default, I recommend you stick with private and only add the members that are necessary. Uh, you can choose uh, the language here, and I'm going to choose English. Now, there's this feature, subscription. Um, if you enable this feature, any new joining members will receive any group conversations or in events or emails forwarded to their personal email. Um, this is a good feature to have enabled because... Members can voluntarily opt out of it, but it's good for them to receive notifications at first just so that they're aware that they're being part of a new team. Um, if they find it annoying, they can always disable this. Okay, so I'm going to click Create. I'm going to walk you through some of the other features of the group. And here's where we can add our members. So... Um, not only can you add individual users, but you can also add other groups. For example, these are all other groups that are existing. Um, but I'm just going to add individual members. Add Adele Vance. I want to add Deborah. I'm going to add Megan. Okay. And as you can see here, as I'm adding them, um, the default m level is member, but I can also set owners. So the difference between these two is that the owner will have complete access and total control over the group. They can, um, remove members. They can delete files. They can delete the group itself. Uh, they can do anything available within the group. A member is used for collaborative team members. So they're going to be editing files, deleting files, but they cannot do anything, anything like deleting users or deleting the group. They can invite other users. Okay, so I'm going to leave that as is for now. I'm going to have Megan as an owner. I'm going to click Add. And this is now going to have my group created. Okay, we've created a group. This marks the end of part one. And just to summarize what we covered in this video. In this video, we covered two topics. What is a Microsoft 365 group? And how to create a Microsoft 365 group. Stay tuned for part two. In part two, we will cover how to manage permissions and where to find all of your resources, such as your shared files, your shared calendar, and your shared inbox. Thank you for watching our video, and I hope you learned something new.